What is up everybody? Welcome back. My name is Eric and uh, let's just get into it. Today I test drove the as yet to launch Neo ET7. I literally just got back, walked in the door and just came straight here, took a few notes and I want to tell you about my experience. Unfortunately, I was not allowed to film inside the vehicle today. So all I can do is really tell you about what it was like to drive the ET7, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and just a few other observations. The ET7 that I drove today is not a final production model which is why Neo told me I was not allowed to film it. I only could film on the outside. So let's just start out with all the good things about this car. First of all, of course, it was an absolute joy to drive. It was a blast, it was so much fun. So right now in Shenzhen, the pandemic's kind of uh, come back. There's a lot of cases of coronavirus and you probably know that China really controls the coronavirus. So what that means is currently in Futian district where Neo house is and where the Neo ET7 is, there's nobody outside. So I was able to just like let loose with the car, um, pedal to the metal, sport mode, everything. I gotta say that the ET7 is zero to 100 or zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. It feels fast. It feels equally as fast as the Tesla Model Y, which is zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. The only thing I would say is that it feels a little bit smoother, less violent on takeoff. And maybe that's because that's the 0 0.2 seconds difference in the two cars, or maybe it's because of the really great air suspension and tuning that Neo has done with the ET7. It's fast, you feel it, but it's not quite as a like a punch to the gut like the Tesla is. Next, the quality of the materials is really, really good, as expected with Neo. Just like my Neo EC6 or the Neo ES8 or ES6 before it, um, the materials throughout are very good. It feels like every surface and every touch point has really been thoughtfully uh, considered, and everything feels really great to the touch. It feels solid, um, especially like the the rattan um, eco-friendly wood grain that's throughout the car. It feels really like solid, but it also feels really light to the touch, if that makes sense. And it looks really nice. Also on the dash, there's kind of like a felt-like material, but it feels a little silky and soft, and it really feels great to the touch. Overall, throughout the car, it feels like there's not really any plasticky touch points. The only plastic I really felt is seatbelt buckle, and also where the seatbelt comes out of the, you know, the wall, the, the beam in the car. Um, everything else didn't feel plasticky. I didn't see any plastic, and everything just felt great. So that's expected of Neo and it's still there with Neo ET7. The next point I want to mention is the HUD, the heads up display, it is improved versus the older model Neos. Now um, previously like in my car the HUD will have like an arrow indicating where to go or which lane to be in. Now with the ET7 it's more like a um, like a Grand Theft Auto mini map where it shows you the actual map uh, and like a line indicating where you need to go in the heads up display in the windscreen. So that's really cool, very useful. If you've ever played an open world video game you'll be right at home using the mini map in the HUD. Okay, a big one here is the speakers. If you're a big fan of music, um, which I'm sure most of you are, the speakers in this car are actually mind-blowing, incredible. It's so good. The speakers are, they're awesome. Like, I always listen to podcasts almost all the time or books, audiobooks. Uh, if I actually moved my car, like uh, switched cars from an EC6 to an ET7, I would probably start listening to music again because it's really, really good. It's, Probably the best I've ever heard in a, in a sedan, like a production model sedan. I can't even think of a car that's uh, got a better sound system than the, the car that I was in today, the ET7. It's really, really good. You got to hear it to believe it. Uh, obviously, I can't let you hear it here. And even if I was able to film today, I wouldn't have been able to let you hear the audio quality. But it's really, really good. Trust me. Next would be the interior physical space in general. So I've already mentioned the physical materials briefly but also like the panoramic sunroof is beautiful, of course. Every single thing I would say in the car from the limited time I had with it, felt like it was carefully considered for the driver or one of the passengers. The back seats both have, um, you know, massaging, and I also think heating and ventilation, but don't quote me on that, I think they do. Also, obviously the passenger seat and the driver's seat also has that. There's also plenty of leg room throughout the car, the passenger seat or the back seats, tons of space. I would just put it simply like the physical space of the car seems like it was designed for humans first. And uh, I'm not calling out any other brands here, but from my experience with um, another brand, Tesla, some of it feels like in the Tesla wasn't really designed for a human first. Whereas here in the in the Neo, everything felt like it was designed to give a person um, the feeling of a second living room, which is what Neo advertises it as. And I think they really hit it out of the park with that. So in my 10 or so minutes driving the car today and interacting with the car, those are the primary positive things that I want to mention. So now let's get into what I really didn't like about the car. The center display is obviously big and it's beautiful and it's 
you know the OS is really good just like the previous Neo cars however the display itself its physical location is slightly closer to the driver or like closer to the back seat I would say um, it's not as far um, regressed into the dash I guess if that makes sense so I would say that it's more more it is because of that is more physically convenient to reach as the driver um, but on the other hand it's not quite as convenient to look at while you're driving you have to turn your head um, at a more uh, aggressive angle I guess you could say uh, it could just be because I'm used to my EC6 and where the display is or it could be because of the next point which is there's now a lack of physical buttons. There are fewer physical buttons on in this car than previous Neo models, including the lack of a home button and a menu button. Because there's no physical home or menu button, the, those buttons are now located in the touch display. And I think that's why they moved the display closer to the driver. I think that if an ET7 is your first Neo, you won't be used to the physical buttons, so it won't really matter. You'll be able to get used to it very quickly. And probably if you are an already existing Neo owner, You'll also be able to adjust very quickly to just touching the touch display to go home or to go to the menu. But I mean, call me a boomer, but I do prefer some physical buttons. When I talked about previously that the car is really designed for people, um, the lack of physical buttons is the only thing that maybe negates that point. There's also fewer physical buttons on the steering wheel, which means that um, some of the like stuff that I'm used to doing in my car, I can't do. For example, adjusting some stuff in the um, instrument cluster display. Uh, it used to be just a button to change some stuff that you want to see uh, and now I couldn't figure out how to do it and neither could the Neo staff that was on the test drive with me um, which again it just takes some time you got to go through the menus to figure out and speaking of menus now you also cannot adjust your side mirrors with the physical buttons on the side of the driver. Now you have to go again through the touch display and find the menu to adjust side mirrors and everything like that which really not a big deal because once you adjust it and save your driver profile you're probably never really going to have to adjust those mirrors again but initially first time kind of annoying to get used to but i'm sure you'll get used to it very quickly i would say that my like complaints or my nitpicks are more like um, just habits that i have with my own neo versus what somebody who's just getting a neo with an et7 or maybe an et5 in the future would have um, just because i have different uh, habits at the end of the day i do really appreciate that the car is just absolutely gorgeous the interior i do appreciate that there's form over function in some aspects but on the other hand some easier functionality in a car which is you know it's ultimately it's a tool and having some things be a little bit easier and more convenient you know it's a trade-off do you want it to look really elegant and not have physical buttons to adjust the side mirrors or do you want it to be easy for a driver who needs to maybe adjust the mirrors not probably quickly ever but conveniently um you know that's a trade-off that the designers have to make and uh, I don't envy being in their position. But the car does look beautiful and lacking those buttons and having it be exactly the same on both sides, pretty much, that's pretty cool, that's nice. And last but not least, not really a nitpick necessarily, just informing you, the ET7 comes with Banyan operating system as opposed to ESA, ES6, and EC6, which comes with Aspen. Now Banyan is on 0 0.7, version 0 0.7. Aspen's on 3.1. Point one or something like that. They did tell me that Banyan will be at 1.0 at launch with the ET7. However, um, I didn't get to experience 1.0, so I can't really comment on the OS. Everything was very responsive and fast, but there's no English currently, as opposed to Aspen, which does have English now. And I was told that Banyan will not launch with English. So if you're a foreigner in China and you want to get an ET7, but you can't read Chinese, you might have to wait a little while. Also, Nomi in the ET7 today, uh, did not really understand even from the Neo staff, which doesn't really make sense because they've got years of experience with Nomi. It could just be a problem with the software. Um, and again, it's not a fully developed version 1.0 software yet. And one other thing is that before I started my test drive, the car pretty much had to be physically uh, manually rebooted, uh, not just like turned off with the app or with the phone or with the key fob, but like opened up the hood of the car, pulled off some things, and had to like completely reboot the car because there's a problem with the software. Again, it's not a final consumer production model and the software is not fully developed. So uh, of course there's gonna be problems. So that's why I can't really comment on everything. Um, and if there's any questions about the OS, I can't necessarily answer them for you today. But if you do have a question, feel free to ask me. And one final thing, the back seats, people asked, they don't fold down. There is an opening like most sedans, like a little hole. You can put long things from the trunk 
through to the back seat, but it's quite small and the trunk is actually quite small as well. Uh, but that's because I think the back row, second row of seats is really, really spacious. There's trade-offs. If you need storage space or space to haul stuff, I don't recommend this car, but you already know that. That's why you get an SUV. Overall, I would say that the car is fantastic. A lot of fun to drive, great material throughout. Um, everything I mentioned already, I don't need to rehash it. It's a really good car. I believe it's gonna sell very well. And one way I can predict that is because how many people were waiting to test drive this car. I was actually supposed to test drive it yesterday, but I wasn't able to. Uh, my Neo fellow messaged me and said, actually, can we push it back a day? Uh, because there just have tons of people that wanna test drive it. And because same problem, she said, a little bit of problems with the software, it made the test drives go a little bit slower. Uh, maybe I had to reboot the car yesterday as well. Today, fully booked appointments, um, but I got in there. I had about 10 minutes with the car and really, really came away very impressed. Um, I also met a guy at the Neo house who is not a Neo owner. Previously, his first car is gonna be the ET7. He booked it uh, in January. His expected delivery date is April, mid-April, and he really loved the car. He went on a test drive today. Finally, he got to see it, what he put his money down for, and he said he's very satisfied. He can't wait to get it. So long story short, a lot of people interested in the car. It's a good car. Uh, I can't wait to actually test drive it again and show you what it's like. Um, but for now, I guess, check out any of the other videos online that are gonna be popping up here any day now. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for liking and subscribing, giving me money on Patreon and PayPal. Um, anything you wanna do, I appreciate it. Even if it's clicking thumbs down and whatever else, doesn't matter. Bye-bye.